No, I, as you heard, Chris, I, what I said was that I can make this argument, and I didn't say definitively whether I believed one or the other was more dangerous than democracy. I did say that I don't believe either of them are going to destroy democracy. Both sides are telling us the other guy is the end of the republic. But, you know, they, they're both lame duck presidents. They're going to be in there four years. The, their, their, their opponent, political opponents are going to be announced two years later. There'll be a new Congress in two years later. And we, ha we have strong institutions in our country. We have judiciary. That we have the press to some extent. We've got Congress and you, you have the military. You've got a lot of institutions that, that are bulwarks against a you know, tyrant coming in and taking over democracy. So I don't think that's going to happen. I think we're both. We're all being told each one is uh, is a threat because it, it's a way of using fear to force us into a binary choice where we're forced into the canal, into this channel that nobody wants to go to, where we either have to vote for we have to vote for the lesser of two evils, and nobody wants to do that. But it keeps them from you know. It, it keeps a lot of the public from considering people like me that have much, I have a much higher popularity rating than either of these candidates. I, so more people would rather see me in office than, presumably, than either of them. Uh, but they are not going to vote for me because the, you know, the media and this whole sort of cartel from both sides is telling them, oh, you have to choose between these two guys and the other guy is so scary. Now, the point I made last night and the way I'm very grateful, by the way, to Aaron Burnett, as you know, CNN has not let me on for a live interview in a decade, and she did that. She was very, very courageous. She gave me a very fair interview. I was really dumbfounded about how fair it was. She pushed back on me a lot, and she doesn't agree with me, obviously, on stuff, but she actually let me speak, which was I'm grateful for. When CNN Digital got it, they cut my quote so it looked like I was making this definitive statement that Biden was more of a threat to democracy than Trump. And of course, I never said that, but that's the way of making me look crazy to the liberals. Here's the point I didn't make, and I think it's a really important point, is that you have one president who allegedly hasn't been convicted, but allegedly was trying to overthrow an election illegally, which of course is horrible for democracy. You had another president who actually is, has censored speech, and there's courts that have found that he censored speech and have enjoined him from doing it again. So there's actually a court judgment against President Biden, and one of the cases is Biden versus Kennedy, which is my case. The other is Murthy versus Biden, which was just heard the arguments by the United States Supreme Court. But what those cases show is that 37 hours after he took the oath of office, High White House officials were meeting with the social media companies, with uh, with YouTube, Facebook, Google, Instagram, and Twitter, and ordering them to censor President Biden's political opponents. And it was on a lot of it was on health, public health, COVID, etc. But also there were other things that were being censored, like criticism of his Ukraine policy, and actually. Criticism right. of a kind of a satire of him and, and and Jill Biden. The danger in this is that what the White House was saying, the leverage the White House had, was it was saying, if you don't do that, we're going to bring antitrust cases against you, and we are going to revoke your Section 230 immunity, which is existential right. for those co co those companies. A Section 230 is the section that protects them against defamation suits for for publishing defamatory statements by, you know, if you or I put up a def defamation against somebody, that right. person can't can sue us, but they can't sue, sue YouTube. Oh, they can't exist right. without that, or they'd have to vet every single post with a lawyer. So it was existential threat, and the, the social media companies then went ahead and censored us. The way they did it is they provided a portal and President Biden gave access to that portal to about a dozen agencies, including the CIA, the FBI, CISA, the IRS, NIH, and other agencies, DHS, to censor, to remove people or to remove particular posts. Now, the reason this is 
should be concerning to Democrats as well is once that precedent is established, you know, Joe Biden, everybody, all the Democrats feel he's such a nice guy, he'd never do anything really malicious. But once you establish that precedent, the next president, whoever he is, even President Trump, now has that power at his fingertips, and he now can use that to censor political opponents. And if right. he did that, look, I don't know. Every Democrat would be. I out don't of their know, mind. Bobby.